Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, artist Ayana V. Jackson takes us behind her futuristic exhibition from the deep. And Malawian artist Zizi Kingston's Ama Piano Fusion is making waves in the Southern African country and beyond. Let's get on with the show. And let's start the show with some highlights of the latest entertainment news from around the world. In some music news, Nigerian Afrobeat singer Simi has been officially announced as a special guest on superstar Alicia Keys' US tour. The singer made the announcement on her social media saying, grateful to be joining Alicia Keys on her Keys to the Summer Tour 2023 on select dates. In film news, the French Riviera city of Cannes was transformed into a playground for the film industry as the 76th iteration of the glamorous film festival kicked off, promising splashy blockbusters, up-and-coming talent, and a hint of controversy. The only feature debut in competition this year is Banel and Adama, a relationship drama set in a Senegalese village by French Senegalese director Ramata Toulaye Sai. And let's get some music news. Malawi has recently produced a new sensation in the music industry. Zizi Kingston, a musician who is taking the country by storm with his unique ama piano sound, which has made him a household name in Malawi's music circles. Ama piano is a subgenre of house music that emerged in South Africa in the mid 2010s. Zizi has become popular for fusing ama piano with local Malawian languages. Red Carpet visited him at his studios in Malawi's capital, Blantyre, to talk about his music and growing fan base. Let's take a look. Zizi Kingston started his musical career at a young age and has been working tirelessly to make a name for himself in Malawi's industry. When I was really young, but I couldn't stand people singing on a, like, you know, on an off key note. Yeah. I'd, that time I didn't even know what what a key or a note is, you know, but I was being irritated and then I stopped going to choir. Zizi started learning music from his uncle, a popular musician and founder of the local band known as the Daredevils Band. It was at the uncle's studio that Zizi honed his craft, showcasing his talent, singing with the band. His dedication and hard work have paid off now one of the most celebrated and booked musicians in Malawi. His music, including his latest Chule, has dominated local radio and TV playlists and streaming platforms like Apple Music. I've always known it was going to happen. I just didn't know when, you know. And for the fact that I didn't know when, I've always known I'm a good, I'm a good creative in music. The people around me have always known that. His growing fame has taken him to international stages, including a recent performance in South Africa. At some point, I was like in top 10 most listened to artists in Africa on Boomplay. And this is not so long ago. So, like, like I'm, I'm first said, like, we have now international artists asking us for, like, collaborations and stuff like that. So that's great. And also we have international bookings. year old says that his music is inspired by everyday experiences that people face and his aim is to create music that people can relate to although Zizi sings other genres like trap music afrobeat and hip-hop music he believes that ama piano is a powerful tool that can be used to inspire change and bring people together in harmony ama piano is the genre that literally changed my life you know because it matches my vibe, it matches like my spirit, like, you know, because I like to see people happy, I like to make people happy, I like to dance, I like to see people, you know, in those vibes. And, you know, by God's grace, I'm a piano from out, and through I'm a piano now people are, I'm able to connect with people. Zizi's fame has also helped promote the names of those he has worked closely with, like 26-year-old music producer Samuel Nyasulu, a.k.a. Lomas. 
it is advancing my things because I'm getting recognition from different people that we're not connected. You get, you understand? So it's been so crazy, very much. <laughs> Zizi stays and operates from Amaryllis Hotel in Blantyre, where some of his fans, Winnie Shower and Mwai Ntajiri work. Uh, actually, I love my piano. So him being the my piano hit maker, uh, automatically I ended up falling in love with him. Um, I'm, I'm expecting more hits from him. Yeah, and even um, I will not be surprised when he reaches international. Let's take a look at some art news. In Washington, a groundbreaking exhibition is exploring the myth of Drexia, an underwater kingdom for enslaved people who died in the Atlantic. From the deep in the work of Drexia with Ayana V. Jackson is the first monographic museum exhibition of the artist who uses photography, video, and sound to create an immersive and feminist aquatopia. Viewers Kali Abdu spoke to Jackson about her inspiration and process. Here is more. Ayana V. Jackson is an artist who challenges the racialization and sexualization of black bodies in her work. She was inspired by Drexia, a Detroit-based techno duo who imagined an underwater world populated by the children of pregnant women who were thrown overboard or jumped voluntarily during the transatlantic slave trade. My background is in social science and sociology, and I always wanted to have conversations, or I've been drawn towards conversations uh, but that, that deal with um, the transatlantic slave trade as well as the, the kind of forced, uh, the involuntary migration of black bodies around the world. Um, and there are lots of stories within that that became worth telling, and among them, related to their first photography, ethnographic portraiture of um, people all over the global south, but Africa in particular. Jackson spent months learning to scuba dive and filming underwater scenes in Senegal, Angola, Ghana, Trinidad and Tobago, and South Africa. She collaborated with local designers and musicians to create costumes and soundscapes that evoke water spirits and cultures. One of the most proud things I'm most proud of in this exhibition is that um, while it is my first um, solo institutional exhibition in a museum, um, it's actually not exactly a solo. It's really a series of collaborations that I've had um, with Rama Jao, an amazing designer from Senegal, Mwambi Wasaki from Angola, Luanda, Angola, um, Robert um, Young of the Cloth in Tobago, Chedo Labanji, whose work we have behind us, from Ghana. Um, and then on top of that, we have animations by an incredible um, animator, Zwilake Mbalo from South Africa. Iran Tahor did all the editing work, also from South Africa. We have Mark Blaze from Zimbabwe. So, you know, this exhibition is really a series of collaborations and, um, and actually empowered. I was able to work with and empower artists from all over the continent to create it. So it's one, really one of my proudest moments. Karen Milborn is a curator of the exhibit. I had been following Ayana's practice and was fully aware of the technical sophistication and the intellect that she brought to thinking about how individuals of color are and have been represented and what that means. And what was exciting to me as a curator was actually joining her in the journey of not just rethinking of our history, but reimagining a different world. Jackson's exhibition features photographs, videos, and an installation that immerses visitors in her vision of Drexia. She hopes that her work will inspire people to reflect on the brutal history of slavery and its ongoing impact, but also to imagine a world of powerful, resilient women. Kali Abdu, VOA News, Washington, D.C. 
Any more art news in his living room in Norway, while the TV broadcasts pictures of the violence back home in Khartoum, Khalid Albay does what he has become known for in the Middle East and beyond, draw cartoons. Let's take a look. This, the, the dogfight is basically between um, the army and the Janjaweed. From his living room in Norway, Khalid Albay is distilling the violence he's seeing unfold back home in Sudan into this cartoon. It's called The Dogfight and depicts the conflict's two main adversaries fighting over a Sudan-shaped piece of meat. No one knows how this is going to end. We're stuck in the middle between, between these two monsters, really, um, in our fight for democracy. It's the kind of work he's known for across the Middle East having inked images about the 2011 Arab Spring movement, as well as wars in Syria and Yemen. He says it's strange watching the fighting play out in Khartoum. My cousin just sent a video of our house in Sudan, where it's like really cold and... It's crazy to watch places that you grew up in, walked, ate, met your friends at, on TV being bombarded and it's something that you don't wish on anyone um, just the thought of you might lose everything you know to albay his art is a way for him to cut through the propaganda of either camp and show there's a peaceful alternative in oslo he co-heads a program at a group that explores ways media can promote democracy and human rights in the middle east art is needed in times like this because it's important to show people art is about you know hope art is about showing there's a different way to talk about things right and art is resistance and now to sports news at the break of dawn emirati falconer ayesha al mansuri drives deep into the abu dhabi desert with her falcons by her side she along with her nine-year-old daughter osha practice the traditional sport and teach the falcons how to hunt for animals such as birds and rabbits. Here is more. This Emirati falconer drives to the desert with her daughter to teach their falcons how to hunt. Falconry has been a tradition in this area for thousands of years. Arab nomads used to survive in the desert by teaching their falcons to catch birds and rabbits. Aisha Al-Mansouri is on a mission to encourage more women to take up the male-dominated sport. It's a traditional sport that teaches you a lot. It teaches one patience to take advantage of opportunities and many other things. You also explore your patience and your expertise by falcons, by teaching them how to hunt. Practicing it allows you to do the sport in the desert. At home, she keeps track of her falcon's diet and logs their weight before every training. Al-Mansouri has given falconry lessons to hundreds of women and published a children's book about it. We aspire for more women to become falconers by practicing this sport and to have a sanctuary for falcons and a private center for them so they can practice alone and learn about the importance of this sport to our heritage and lives. Thank you so much for watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voaafrica.com. We are also on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Do not forget to like, to share, and to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye everyone.